are the do's and don'ts of royal dress code. Believe it or not, I have a list of 17 guidelines for royal women in what they wear from their nail polish to when they can wear tiaras to, you know, pantyhose, all these different sorts of things. And ironically, I kind of thought I would make this video just because I mentioned the royal dress code quite a bit and I don't have a video going over kind of what that means, you know, for the monarchy, most notably Great Britain, but a lot of these rules translate between other royal families as well. But ironically, when I was researching this topic, the person who came up the most, I kid you not, for violating the dress code pretty much all the time, in fact, I counted, let me look at my list, 14 out of 17 violations was Meghan Markle. So guys, I will be going over, this is actually not even a video meant to necessarily criticize Megan. It just happened to be like, that's just like, that literally came up every time I was looking for, looking for kind of royal dress code things. Her name came up constantly. So guys, I'm going to go over some of the do's and don'ts and let me know which ones you were surprised by, which ones you would absolutely not follow in a million years and kind of what, you know, dress code do you actually want to kind of emulate from the royals? Because it is, they are kind of great for in terms of professional dress. I take a lot of inspiration from royals in terms of professional dress code. And I think there's actually a lot of nuggets here of wisdom. But without further ado, if you guys haven't been to Royal News Network before, hello, my name is Brittany and I go over everything related to royals. So that's news, gossip, jewelry, television shows, movies, and history. I do it all right here. So if you want to subscribe, that would be great. And I'm in the like the final days of a giveaway. So I will put in the link to my giveaway video. So if you want to go over there and check that out and don't forget to subscribe and then leave a comment on that video as well. That would be great. The details about the giveaway are listed down below. But like I said, the do's and don'ts of royal fashion. Now, number one, and these aren't in any particular order, although I will kind of build up to like the most crucial at the end. Number one is kind of don't wear nail polish. I mean, if you do wear something that's very, very neutral, there's actually one specifically that the queen likes to wear, and I'll put that in down below, but pretty much is basically just natural nails. The queen is not a fan of nail polish, and generally you won't really see any royals, you know, go outside that. I think we've seen Catherine a time or two have some more color on her toenails, but when it comes to her nail nails, pretty much everyone is very neutral, very minimal. And again, it kind of, I think looks kind of appropriate. And then even for me, I generally go with more kind of lighter nail polish, but that's more because I tend to pick at it and I would pick it all off. And if you're, it's like a really bright color and you pick it all off, it looks horrendous. So I do kind of go about this rule, but I can understand why it would also be kind of annoying because I do like kind of a dark red color during like the fall. I think that's really pretty. The vamp color from Chanel is probably my favorite, but Megan kind of famously kind of like poo pooed this rule. And during the British Fashion Awards, she actually came on stage in violating dress code in another way and also was wearing this dark nail polish and on her nails and it was you know a bit of a surprise and raised a bit of a fuss because again this is something the queen's very particular about the next rule is basically just don't wear black and black is a mourning color so you'll see most of the time the royals wear black during the remembrance kind of sunday remembrance day events but beyond that you will not see them wear black unless it's a funeral. Like maybe they wear black slacks or something like that, but that's pretty rare. And the reason is, again, is mourning. And the queen also always makes them pack a black outfit. So this is because when the queen went to her tour in Kenya, she actually had her father died while she was on that tour and she had no black outfit and she needed a mourning outfit to step off the plane. So once her plane landed, she had to wait for somebody to bring her a black outfit that she could wear off the plane. So she always requires everybody to have a black outfit in their suitcase just in case as they're traveling. But the vast majority of the time as well, she doesn't like them to wear black. Megan notoriously like completely was just did not like this rule and really wore black a ton. And to to be fair to her, she looks pretty good in black. So I don't really find that, you know, to be terribly, terribly poor. But part of the reason she, she does this too, and, and this is not a particular rule, but this is something that a lot of the royals do do, is wearing bright colors. And the reason they don't wear black, but wear bright colors instead, is that it's much easier to pick them out of the crowd. When the queen is wearing her neon green, like neon green, uh, you know, it's like they, they made it like a, a green screen. That's how green it is. 
when she wears that she you can see her on the balcony it's very obvious you know where she is on the balcony however you know if she's wearing just black all the time she kind of blends in and this way at least if you're the person that's five or six seven eight people back you may not be able to see her but maybe you see the top of her hat and so that's kind of a a rule that most of the royals follow and i've hardly ever seen Catherine break this rule i don't i can't even think oh there's one time she wore a black velvet evening gown ones that we haven't actually seen again and that was the only time she actually ever wore black and so again most of the royals follow this rule very specifically and it's for good reason i think the next is no short hemlines and so basically your your skirts or your dresses should about hit your knee maybe a smidge above but about hit your knee and there's a couple of reasons for this a Catherine had many many experiences of dresses that were too short or too flimsy flying up most of the time it was you know generally it was actually that they were just too flimsy or it was just so windy and some of the time she could have avoided it sometimes she couldn't have uh, some shapewear would probably have done her kind of some favors here because everybody saw her basically her bare bum like multiple multiple times so it was it's that's kind of a, a good thing to wear the queen actually pair, puts weights in her skirts and i think either Catherine has done that or she's finally tried to figure out what fabrics will not do that to her uh, like the last time we actually saw her have a skirt fly up incident almost was princess eugenie's wedding and it was insanely windy that day so that was the last time we saw it. And again, kind of the length of the skirts does help. But Catherine, especially early in our marriage and especially while she was pregnant, sometimes wore dresses either that were just too short in general or because she was wearing a regular outfit instead of a specific maternity outfit. The, the dress ended up being shorter because the bump got in the way. And so there's one of my favorite dresses of hers, actually I really loved it, was this white and blue black polka dot outfit. And I thought it was really cute, I actually really liked it. And she was wearing that to a wedding and it flew up and you saw like, I think the bare, the lower half maybe of her behind or something, not lower half, I should say maybe like, like it showed her entire thigh. You could see her entire thigh. and. Again, that's just not appropriate. And she could, you know, avoid that in two ways with weights and wearing longer hemlines, although that, you know, a couple of times in New Zealand, in India, on tour, both of those times, she actually wore something that was rather long and it just didn't help. So next is generally the queen apparently doesn't like wedges. I am a fan of wedges because I have some issues with my feet. So I really like them. Catherine has worn wedges several, several times. Megan has worn some espadrilles a couple of times. So it's not something she did frequently but it is something that the queen apparently just doesn't like but we do see a decent amount of royal ladies wearing them not only in the uk but in other european countries as well i know you know at least in the uk countess sophie has worn them maxima has worn them so we've seen them a lot of different times but apparently the queen is not a fan so she would prefer it. so for example if she doesn't like wedges you know maybe you can wear it on an event but you don't wear it in her presence and Catherine has stuck to that and i believe megan has too the next one is, and I remember this when Catherine first married in, because I was like, oh my gosh, that would just drive me bonkers, is wearing pantyhose. So apparently, when Catherine first married in, this was still quite the rule that you wore pantyhose basically all the time. Now, in the United States, we hardly ever wear pantyhose, you know, unless it's like tights for winter, like black, um, I think opaque tights is how you say it, like that you can't see through, but they're almost kind of like, they're almost kind of leggings, even though you shouldn't wear them as leggings. They are kind of leggings-ish. And so that was something that, you know, Catherine really, really stuck to during the first couple of years of her marriage. They would say where she got her tights, they had kind of a silky effect to them. And that was something Megan did a time or two, but pretty much refused to do for the vast majority of her marriage. She, she did it once, Buckingham Palace garden party for Charles for 70th birthday. So she did go ahead and wear those then, but they were like not the right colors, so they were too light. I kind of went with the dress, but I wondered if that was intentional or not, but I think that was maybe the only time she did. And I understand Catherine getting away from that at some point. I haven't heard of her actually wearing tights much since the first couple of years of her marriage but i think it's important if you are marrying into a new institution if you are learning a new set of rules go ahead and follow them and then eventually once you've established yourself then you maybe you can kind of push and go you know what i, I really don't want to do that anymore let's, let's get away from that because you have some sort of capital to be able to make that something that you go ahead and do so next one is nothing that is too low cut and i think this is you know 
a good rule. Catherine has bro broken this a time or two. But my, my thing is, in this opinion, is if you are somebody who's a bit more small chested, you can get away with something that's a bit more low cut than some other women. Cause I know for me, I can wear a shirt and it looks obscene. Another woman can wear the same shirt and she looks totally fine. So it very much depends on kind of your body type. And so I, I kind of get that, that sometimes, you know, some of those V-necks I thought for Catherine looked really, really good, but you know, some people complained it was too low cut. But again, I think it's kind of, apples and oranges, it kind of depends on your body composition on that rule. But I understand it. You don't want something, you know, it's not Hollywood. You don't need something that goes down to your navel. That's just, you know, no Jennifer Lopez dresses here. That's just not appropriate. Uh, another rule is avoid fabrics that wrinkle. And this is something that Megan did, like everything she wore from Givenchy at least, almost always seemed to wrinkle on her. And part of it is the fabric, part of it, you know, you have to, if you have a dress that's a certain fabric, like sometimes celebrities lay down in the limo. That happened with Jennifer Aniston. She had a silky dress and she laid down in the limo, otherwise it would get wrinkled on the way to an awards show. So. You know, I understand that things do wrinkle, but you know, if you think about Catherine, I hardly can think of something wrinkling on her. Recently, I did notice that her jacket that she wore when she, she and William were going and looking at their portrait, I noticed that it had wrinkled a bit in the car. You know, she eventually took it off, but it was sort of wrinkled in the back. But again, I feel like she's always chosen fabrics for the most part that don't wrinkle. The only other notable instance I can think of is when she went to the Netherlands for a very short visit and her her suit from Catherine Walker just ended up with a big old crease in it from sitting down on the plane and flying over. So in that instance, you know, it's like, it's better to get something that doesn't wrinkle or try to figure out or change outfits or something. But that one unfortunately didn't work. And it kind of just, again, makes you look a bit sloppy. And, but Megan, that was a constant, constant issue for her. A lot of her stuff looked wrinkled. And it just, you know, it kind of went with her whole, she had a very messy style as a royal. And that's just not the best way to go. Next is when you are on an engagement with the queen, you need to wear a hat you, most of the time. So there is a, a visit where Catherine and Camilla were with the queen and neither of them wore hats. The queen always wears hats pretty much. It's rare that she does not. She's outside especially. She, I can't even think off the top of my head recently of a time she hasn't worn a hat. I mean, I think there was maybe the G7 summit in Cornwall or something she didn't, but she wears a hat most of the time. And if she says, you know, I'm a wearing a hat, it's basically code for you wear a hat too. And that was something apparently Megan did not want to follow as that was apparently told to her that the queen is wearing a hat on their engagement together. And I'm sure somebody on Megan's team told her you need to have a hat for this event. Megan decided not to. I don't know how exactly that decision came about, but it may, I think the advantage with hats sometimes is it can kind of make you seem more together because Megan's hair, especially halfway through the day, had gotten super messy because it had been blown around. And so her like her hairline, it was like awful looking. And so again, it's just one of those things where it's just professionalism that you look more together. I think, you know, that is a good thing. Next is voiding sleeveless or shoulder bearing looks. So I don't see the, like, except for evening gowns. Evening gowns, I feel like is the exception. Except for the Jamaica tour, that was one of the first times I ever remember Catherine wearing something that did not have sleeves. And she's been married into the royal family for 10 years. So she was very, very, you know, specific about this. She did not, she did, and they were very wide too. I mean, they were a couple of inches, they were long. And she actually amended the dress because it didn't really have, originally had them. It had like a shawl and she amended it into sleeves, which was great. So it's, it's one of those things too, where I feel like that's kind of appropriate. You know, obviously if you live in a super hot climate, you know, sleeveless is fine. I know Queen Letizia of Spain, she wears sleeveless quite a bit. She has incredible arms, by the way, that woman must do Pilates or yoga like intensely. I think she, also she has some ballerina training or something. Cause she definitely has that look that will willowy type look that ballet dancers have. So anyways, Yes, generally no. Catherine hardly ever wore sleeveless. Megan did wear sleeveless quite a bit and shoulder bearing too. So actually on at Trooping the Color, like the, just a month after her marriage, she wore this Carolina Herrera outfit. And apparently you were supposed to have the sleeves a bit more over your shoulders and she pulled, pulled them down past her shoulders. And 
again, it's just one of those things where if you're marrying into an institution, just go ahead and follow the rules because it makes it look like you're least trying. And also it's like, you know, if like if you go into the military, there's a dress code, you know, in certain jobs, there is a dress code and you must follow the dress code. You know, I'm sure she didn't, you know, it's not quite as a big deal if you're an actor, but I'm sure she wasn't, you know, pulling off various things off suits and going, well, I know better, I'm gonna wear X. I mean, I'm sure she did that from time to time. But again, it wasn't something that she did like super constantly. And it's just about following the directives here. She also wore a spaghetti strap dress, which was, it was hideously ugly. Like the colors were just hideous on this dress she wore in Australia. It's just, they were just like, I don't know. I look at that dress and I think puke colors. <laughs> It's like, why would you buy that dress? I don't even know. And it didn't look right when she wore it again in South Africa later. But she also wore obviously that like a sundress that was spaghetti straps that had a, a, a slit all the way up her thigh. Like you could, when she bent down, you could almost see her entire thigh. And that's not like a wardrobe flash, like accidentally, like that's the way it's designed. And there's actually a little button so she could actually like make it just a smidge more. And it's like, it was a beach dress. That's like a private, again, when you're on your own private time, you can wear whatever you want. For the most part, that's pretty much not fine. But if you're royal, you're on duty, you're somebody's paying you to do a job, even though maybe it doesn't exactly feel like it. Somebody else is paying for your trip, paying for your experiences, paying for your travel, your hotel, all those sorts of things. So you know what, follow the rules. Oh, next is bright color. So I did list this as the second another thing. So again, wearing bright colors is something most of the royals do do. It does help them stand out. You know, when I went to the Queen's Platinum Jubilee and particularly at the St. Paul's service, like all the royal ladies were wearing these really bright colors and it just really did make them stand out. And I thought it was great and fantastic. So I really enjoyed that. And again, because there's just so many people, it's hard to see someone if they're not in a bright color. And Megan just was, she's one of those I mean, again, I always feel like Megan is mimicking influencers because she, she, that's her level. And a lot of influencers like refuse to wear color, which I think is idiotic, quite frankly. I love color. I think color is great. Not every color looks good on me. Me and mustard yellow, I think mustard yellow can look fantastic on some women. It look, would look horrific on me and my skin tone. But I think color is important as a royal, because that way people can see you. Like they're there to see you. Another rule that Megan, oh gosh, the messy bun. I know I've railed about this in other videos, so I won't go too much longer, but I hated the messy bun on Megan. It just was like, it was so unprofessional. Messy buns are for going to, going to the gym. You know, if you're in college and getting up late, you know, that's maybe okay at college. Once you're past college age, you should not be wearing a messy bun into work. If you are a young woman, do not wear a messy bun into work. It is so unprofessional. If your hair is, you know, you can't, you didn't have time to style it or something like that, wear a bun or put it in a nice ponytail. Those are your two options. Or maybe put it in a clip, I do that too. Just don't, like, messy bun is for a Saturday, Sunday, like, you know, working in your garage or something like that. That's what a messy bun is for. It's not for work. It's not for going in front of the international media and looking like you just rolled out of bed. Just no bueno. So this one I thought was kind of interesting because if you think about Catherine, you hardly, you don't ever see her do this, is take her jacket off, take her coat off. So I don't ever remember seeing Catherine generally walk around with and without a coat. If she does, for example, lose the coat at some point during the day because it got too hot, it's done in like the car. It's not like something done with with others around really. But Megan always pretty much seemed to style her outfits around the idea that she would take her coat off. And I get it, you know, maybe you're cold in one place and then you walk into some place and you're hot. But I can also see how if you're designing your whole outfit around always taking your coat off, that your coat, Megan never cinched her coats, her generally, sometimes she did. She never buttoned them, and so they were always loose and flapping around, and it just tended to make her look unprofessional, and it's kind of sloppy, and so, and then you, <laughs> you know, especially this one in Scotland, she has the coat open, she has a crossbody bag on, and her her pants are dragging in the, the wetness of the, the, the sidewalk. It just looks 
bad. So I, I get the, I totally get this rule. Next is heels shouldn't be too high. And I think this is especially good for women who are quite a bit taller. Um, Catherine is naturally pretty tall. She's about 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, She's not like 5'11", like some people say. She's 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, so when she does wear heels, you know, she is generally probably about six feet tall. I think it does help though that William is 6'3", so kind of evening them out more, I think is kind of helpful. So Catherine does obviously wear flats from time to time, but usually she does wear heels. Another one is no crossbody bag. So this kind of, again, I've seen Megan do this. There's this one time, especially in South Africa, where it literally looked like she was going to the farmer's market in LA. She had this hobo crossbody bag on, like the, the look was too casual. I think Catherine has always done a fantastic job of being casual, but always looking put together. Megan, dipped into way too casual like you didn't even care. You know, obviously royals have to be casual sometimes, but I always think it's better if a royal is casual, but also put together. Because again, it shows your intention behind the outfit. It shows that you know the world's cameras are on you. So you're gonna actually put thought and effort into your look. And I can't really think of any royals generally I see wear crossbody bags on engagements. The vast majority of time it's clutches. Sometimes they are handbags, and most of the time they do kind of hold it in their hand almost. We're getting into kind of the last couple here, and I think these are some of the most important. And I'll start off with kind of the funnest one first, which is that apparently, at least in the UK, young women cannot wear tiaras until they are married. I kind of thought that rule was kind of cute, but I don't think they totally followed that. I came across that quite a bit, but I don't know, because I think, because I know Princess Margaret wore a tiara before she was married. So it may have been women just marrying into the royal family don't get to wear a tiara until their marriage, which again, makes complete sense. I know in some royal families they have actually, there was a big wedding, so it was Crown Prince Hakan and his wife, Crown Princess Metmarab, were marrying in Norway, and so Maxima, who was gonna be marrying the king a couple months around that time, she they weren't married yet, but the queen lent her a tiara. The Dutch are much more freer about their tiara lending than the Brits are. The Brits are very stingy about that. You'll notice Catherine always, only wears one tiara, and other families, the women can have access to like five or six. The queen e, Queenie, though, is very kind of stingy with her tiaras. So again, I just thought that was kind of a fun thing, but I really hope we see Charlotte in a tiara before her wedding. I think that would be kind of cool. And like the Strathmore Rose tiara. That's like the white whale, one of the white whales of tiara watching is seeing the Strathmore Rose. Apparently it's very, very, very delicate, so they can't bring it out, but it was worn at least in one portrait with the queen mother way back in the 20s, I believe. And she wore it across her forehead. So hopefully maybe one day we shall see it again. And one of the next ones I wanna talk about is expense. So, royals have to walk this exceptionally fine line between wearing something that is appropriate for the event, but not breaking the bank. Because generally, they have to pay for it, out of their pocket for it. The Brits always have to pay for the fashion they're wearing. They don't get lent things like celebrities do. They have to pay for it. So you can't buy something generally that costs like six figures. That's you don't do that. Of course, Megan broke that rule because her her dress in Monaco apparently cost $100,000. It was a custom Dior haute couture gown that I feel like looked ugly. The color was terrible. I thought it looked kind of terrible on her because it clutched her bump weird because I think the fabric wasn't the right fabric for what they were doing. Anyways, so, so that's too expensive. So Catherine though, for her James Bond premiere, she wore a Jenny Packham dress. I think probably cost somewhere because they actually resold basically the same dress. I think Catherine's was a bit more custom made, but that dress probably cost between three to five, maybe at the most $8,000 which isn't bad for something she'll probably wear again at some point. <laughs> I feel like she only can wear that to a James Bond premiere. I think that would look weird at a state dinner. So I think it was another, it's probably another movie premiere at some point, or maybe, ooh, Charlotte can wear that dress again. But either way, it's like, it wasn't a terribly expensive dress. Obviously she has some where we don't know the price tags of it, but I would, I would guess that most of them range like at the high end, 10 to $15,000 for an exceptionally, exceptionally like a gown. Some of her day-to-day -day outfits can get pricey, you know, depending on, you know, maybe sometimes the jewelry she's wearing or the accessories, but generally Catherine just doesn't break the bank. Megan almost always broke the bank. She was always wearing like Givenchy, Dior, like, and custom pieces. So that meant 
they took forever and Catherine obviously has a great relationship with Alexander McQueen and Catherine Walker and so those are technically custom pieces Catherine Walker you know you pick the outfit you want and then they tailor it to you Alexander McQueen makes things specifically for Catherine but I also don't feel like again that they're they're like costing a ton all the time I could be totally wrong but you know you have to just walk this very very fine line and I think Megan just was like so excited that she had access to all this money that she just spent like a ton of it because you know as well when her on her engagement she wore for her engagement photo shoot she wore a $75,000 dress and there was such a hubbubaloo about it because a it was partially transparent and b it was $75,000 that people were like who bought this and the Buckingham Palace or Kensington Palace had to come out and say it was a private purchase that's how big a deal it was is that the palace had to comment on it because again you're open as a royal you're open to criticism so if you wear something like that and there's no real good reason people are going to call you out on it now granted if you're on a foreign tour if you are on a state visit or a coronation I feel like coronations or weddings are the times where you can kind of break the bank and people are like eh Okay, because that outfit has to live in posterity, so I, I kind of get it. But when it comes to like just general engagements, like Megan for one engagement, you know, as a royal, she wore this completely custom Dior piece. You know, the shoes were custom, the the outfit was custom, and I was like, that probably cost several grand for that outfit. Like, you know, getting up to probably you know five, six, seven, eight, ten thousand dollars just for something. And again, it wasn't something that was like so crazy that you could really justify the cost for that and then of course her outfit for the recent st paul's service i would guess because the head to toe was custom dior like pumps like you don't generally need to make custom pumps like you can change the color maybe but generally you don't need like custom custom pumps like i'm sure that outfit costs about 10 grand i could be totally wrong and Catherine has been called out for this too but it's mostly for a one particular necklace she has so she has this cartier necklace Catherine does that I believe costs like 40 like fifty thousand dollars it's a very very expensive and she has the matching earrings too and she's only worn that necklace I want to say twice once very early in her marriage like right before the Olympics and then she would wore a bright blue outfit and then another time and one time during her tour in New York otherwise she stayed away from it she's worn the earrings one time but she stayed away from it mostly partly just because of the cost and then finally, one of the big rules as well is that you buy from your country. All the royals follow this. You need to buy and have a relationship with a designer from the country you're representing. So Catherine in the UK is Alexander McQueen. She wears a lot of other designers as well, but she sticks to a lot of Alexander McQueen, Catherine Walker, and part of the reason for that is that they represent the UK. So every time she's buying something from them, she's putting money back into the UK economy. And that, again, is a very good thing. You look at, you know, Sweden, Crown Princess Victoria has a couple H&M dresses that she's worn in official photography shoots like gowns one she wore her to her brother's wedding another one she wore in her you know 10th anniversary pictures with her husband with a tiara and you know they just cost a couple hundred dollars so you don't have to break the bank every time you wear something and granted this is easier for some countries than others obviously you have a lot of options in the UK you don't have as many in a place like you know perhaps Belgium or you know Denmark you just don't quite have as many options especially when you're getting into you know haute couture you know gowns and those sorts of things you just won't have the the swath of options that you would do in you know a place like the states or france or italy or the uk you just don't have quite as many options so i understand why some women have to do go out of their countries but generally you either buy in country or when you're on tour you buy something local you have something that you've purchased from a local person now Granted, again, in some countries that's easier than others. But it's a great way, really, again, to put com money into the host country and represent them on tour as well. Catherine does this in accessories and in actual outfits. You know, it kind of depends on what, you know, where she's going and what she's doing. That's really, really important. And Megan really just did not want to abide by this rule at all. Like, she hardly ever wore British fashion. And, you know, and that's part of her job is to represent British fashion, British economy. Like, that's part of the reason why she, you know, you are a royal. You are a soft diplomat. And people, 
people like sometimes kind of miss the message that your clothes can send. You know, there's a clip from The Office and I think it's very apt, you know, dress for the job you want, not the job you have. So if Meghan Markle wanted to be queen of the UK, it's probably not the best idea to look like a sloppy mess, but that's what she insisted on doing. I have no clue why, because it did not do her any favors with the general public. But hey, that's, that's that was her choice. But Catherine always looks like a queen. She looks like a queen in waiting. She looks like the future heir, the future heir's wife, and that she will be one day queen consort, mother to a future king, grandmother to a future king or queen. So Catherine really does represent, you know, this stately regalness that royals have. While as Meghan just looked always so stinking sloppy, and it's just kind of something again that. If you are representing a country, you are a diplomat. Even if Harry and Meghan say, oh, we're in the States, you know, it doesn't matter. We can do whatever we want. It's like, no, every time you use your titles, you represent the UK. Whether or not you think you do is beyond the point because you do. So anyways, guys, let me know what you think of these do's and don'ts of royal fashion. Let me know what your rule is your least favorite one that you cannot abide by. Let me know which one you think actually is, is pretty good and pretty decent. So thank you guys so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.